Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Do you know who the leader of our Senate is? Our version of Chuck Schumer, the leader of the majority in the Canadian Senate. Well, it's this guy, Senator Yuen Pa Wu, appointed by Justin Trudeau to the Senate. So, of course, he's a Trudeau man through and through. But you know what Trudeau did in the Senate, right? He renamed his senators the Independent Senators Group. <laughs> so they don't call themselves liberals, but... They are not independent. They are liberal. They vote Trudeau's party line. They were appointed by Trudeau. The fact that Canada's media report them as independent shows how weak the media is, how trust, untrustworthy. But did you know that Senator Yuan Pawu is the head of the biggest party in the Senate, the liberals? Um, they call themselves the independent Senate group, but it's, it's the liberals. Did you know he's the head of it? He's our Chuck Schumer. I don't think one in a thousand Canadians know, know that. They, they don't even know who he is, let alone that he's a boss. But they should, because he's quite something. And he's on a real tear lately. You know, I, I checked, and it's been 933 days as of today that China kidnapped two Canadians, Michael Kovrig and Michael Spivor. 933 days. China's a dictatorship. It's a rogue country. I think we can stop pretending that the Wuhan virus was naturally occurring now. I mean... Now that Trump is gone, even Hollywood liberals are stating the obvious. Like well, so this was, perhaps was, there's, there's a chance that this was created in a lab. There's an investigation. A chance? Well, but I, so, I, 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 oh I, my if God. there's evidence, I'd love to hear it. There's I just don't a know. novel respiratory coronavirus overtaking Wuhan, China. What do we do? Oh, you know who we could ask? The Wuhan novel respiratory coronavirus lab. The disease is the same name as the lab. Yeah, it's a tough question. Is China worse in how it treats its own people or is it worse in how it treats the rest of the world? That's a tough question. No matter what your measure is, China is atrocious. Corruption, military threats, environmental pollution, civil liberties being crushed, racism, whatever. It's, it's tough to say what the worst part of it is. But here's what Senator Yuan Pao Wu said in the Senate very recently. He is our majority leader in our Senate here is Trudeau's man in the Senate. Listen to him. Well, as political theorists will remind us, there are two kinds of state legitimacy. There's input legitimacy and there's output legitimacy. In the West, we tend to place much more emphasis on input legitimacy, which is essentially about how we select our representatives. Hence our focus, rightly so, on free and fair elections. But in practice, citizens also confer legitimacy to the governments based on the results that are produced by that government. That is to say, on outputs. Now, like most of you, I was brought up in the orthodoxy that input democracy through free and fair elections will in the long run outperform because citizens can always vote out a government that has not performed and in that way seek to improve outputs by changing the inputs. But we are learning the hard way that democratic elections and changes in government over decades have not consistently produced better outcomes for the citizens in many industrialized economies. Sure, there has been economic growth, but income and wealth inequality have increased with stagnating median incomes and growing societal tension. That is the reason for what is now widely observed to be the problem of a democratic deficit in some Western industrialized economies and the rise of populist leaders who have illiberal instincts, but nevertheless command much support through democratic elections. Let me be clear. I much prefer the vagaries of democratic choice to the certainty of authoritarian rule. But we cannot be smug about our preference for input legitimacy as the only way to validate state power. And we cannot deny that the Chinese state has its own claim to a kind of legitimacy, even if we don't like it. Well, and that was just a short excerpt. Was that speech actually written in Beijing? I mean, that's exactly what Beijing itself says. It's just weird hearing it in stereo. From this year, from Beijing, and this year, from the Canadian Senate. 
That's Trudeau's majority leader in Canada's Senate. He has some interesting views. I mean, look at this in the Globe Mail. Senator warns China might not free Spavor and Kovrig in Meng deal if Canada does not, uh, if Canada not part of effort. So he's warning us, we have to do what China says. We have to pay the political ransom. I mean, look at this. Mr. Wu has previously played a role in back-channel diplomacy between Canada and China and says he wants to do what he can to help bring about the release of Mr. Kovrig and Mr. Spavor. I am plugged into the discussions around these issues. He said there is a risk a future U.S. deal to free Ms. Meng could be misinterpreted on the Chinese side as a problem that was resolved purely by D.C. and Beijing without Canada. The resolution of the Meng Wanzhou issue may not, I am really sad to say, may not facilitate a resolution of the Spavor Kovrig issue, Mr. Wu told a Carleton University webinar last week. So hang on, hang on. He, he's not an ambassador. He's not with the foreign ministry. He's not, he's not a diplomat. He gives Beijing speeches almost verbatim in, in the Canadian Senate, and, and he's doing back-channel diplomacy with, with China about the hostages, back-channel diplomacy. Can I ask whose side he's representing? I'm not joking, you just heard whose side. He's telling us what China's going to do to us if we don't capitulate. This is an editorial cartoon published by Xinhua. Xinhua is in China. It's a propaganda agency. Their focus is on Chinese things. Uh, they publish in Chinese. Who told them that it would be politically useful for them to do a cartoon in English targeting Trudeau on the Indian residential school issue right now? I guess I'm wondering... Which came first, Senator Wu or Xinhua? Who was following whom? How can this man be in the Canadian Senate at all? That's baffling to me. But how is that he is Trudeau's majority leader in the Senate? Trudeau's main man. And the man all the other liberal senators follow. How? Even the CBC state broadcaster thinks maybe he's just a bit over the top. Oh, just a teeny bit. In a provocative speech in the upper house on Monday, Independent Senators Group leader Senator Yuan Pao Wu said Canada should avoid criticizing China oh, for its human rights abuses against Uyghur Muslims because our country has mistreated indigenous peoples. Echoing an argument made by Chinese officials at the UN last week, Wu said China, China's policy toward the Muslim minority in Xinjiang province is similar to the colonialism directed at indigenous peoples in this country and that condemning the Asian country in harsh terms will be gratuitous and simply an exercise in labeling. Yeah, guys, when the CBC says you're a bit too uh, into Beijing, it's time to rethink things a bit, pull back a little. Real question, why do we even have diplomatic relations with China? Are we succeeding diplomatically in any way? Not with Kovrig and Spay War, but with anything? Here's a story from Hong Kong. China blocks Canadian move to set up World Trade Organization probe into serious negative canola seed restrictions. China suspended imports of canola seeds from two firms in March 2019, while also making shipments from other Canadian firms subject to enhanced inspections. But at Monday's meeting, the World Trade Organization dispute settlement body, China blocked Canada's first request to establish a panel to investigate the restrictions. Oh, okay. So total diploma diplomatic failure there. Hong Kong is shutting down the last vestiges of freedom for media and politicians, so total failure on the human rights front. Oh, not just Hong Kong, elsewhere too. Chinese censorship found at Australian University Rights Group. High numbers of Chinese students at Australian universities have created an environment of self-censorship with lecturers avoiding criticism of Beijing and Chinese students saying, staying silent in fear of harassment, Human Rights Watch said. We know that happens in Canada, too. We've spoken to some of the victims. And look at this from Canada, as published in the Epoch Times. Chinese Communist Party agents had access to private information of New Brunswick students through Confucius Institutes. Confucius Institutes, if you don't know, are Chinese pop propaganda ministries on campuses around the world answering to Beijing. They're in Canadian universities to recruit kids, propagandize students. Why, why haven't they all been kicked out? I mean, those two Michaels have been kept hostage for 933 days. Why, why weren't these Confucius Institutes kicked out 
932 days ago. All these ambassadors and diplomats and military attaches and spies, attaches and spies, why weren't they kicked out like 931 days ago? Why Chinese nationals in our institutions like that virus lab in Winnipeg, why are the liberals covering up the facts about that? Why? Are you kidding, why? There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China. Why, that's why. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.